Well, good morning. Happy to see oh so many of you, and our, thank you for our international friends for joining us, because obviously Georgia is center political universe. I want to get a few specific things out there. The 20 individuals we found as non-citizens who were canceled were canceled based on individualized information from those people. What it is is they signed affidavits to get out of jury duty, basically saying, I am a non-citizen. So we were able to look at those and see that they were not citizens. They signed a thing swearing they were not a citizen. And they were in seven different counties. And those are the jurisdictions to which they will be referred for investigation and prosecution. Those counties are Fulton, Cobb, Bibb, Clayton, Henry, Gwinnett, and DeKalb. Again, Fulton, Cobb, Bibb, Clayton, Henry, Gwinnett, and DeKalb. Um, as the Secretary said, the reason we were able to get these additional 156 individuals who we do not know if they are citizens or not is because of the upgrade in our technology over the last few years. The original audit was done in the old voter registration ENET. The new one has been done under Jarvis the Georgia Registered Voter Information System. And yes, we did get the name from the Marvel movies, just to really tweak people. Um, but because of that, we have a better interface with the Department of Driver Services. So in the initial audit, we did not have alien identification numbers for individuals who had gotten driver's license. Now we were able to send names that were empty on that front that came back as null on citizenship verified to the Department of Driver Services get those A numbers and bring back and they still say they don't have proof of citizenship yet. That does not mean that they are for sure non-citizens. So what we have to do is we have to have human investigation where an investigator will knock on a door, look at documentation and find those things. And that will be a continuing effort as, as the Secretary pointed out. Another thing to point out is in the time in office we have been able to legally cancel over a million registrations. That's not canceling voters, it's canceling registrations of so people who are no longer in the state, who no longer have a valid right to vote. And I want to po point something out. If you go to the data hub that the Secretary talked about, you can search Georgia Secretary of State data hub to go there, you will see that the active voter number has continued to increase every day as we go through. That's because of two things. One, voter registrations that were received before the deadline but had not been processed. And two, and very, very importantly in this situation, inactive voters who were in the process of being canceled, who were still there, who came and voted. And that's the important reason. You can't just take a national change of address list and, and say you have to cancel these people because there are people who have legal rights and federal law is there to protect those rights and state law is there to protect those rights and our office will always protect the rights of every voter. So with that, I'll take any questions. Archa. Okay, and an active voter is somebody who was an active voter at one point and a few things might have happened that would cause them to get a notification saying, hey, it doesn't look like you're here anymore. It's going to be a national change of address, it's going to be a returned mail, and it's going to be, what's the third thing? A cross-state check would be the other, other reason. And then they will get a mailing saying, contact us within a certain amount of days, and if not, we're going to move you to inactive. And once you're, you're on the inactive list, if you miss two general election cycles, which means a gubernatorial and a presidential, then they will put you to a cancel status, but we will again send a mailing to you saying, hey, one last time, and this office was the first to actually release the list publicly. So anybody can go search that list, look for their friends, look for their family, and see if they're in that, in that position to be canceled. And of course, we can only do these in 90-day windows outside of the election for this kind of systematic um, update of, of lists. Mark. This is data, and there are human beings involved in data. There's always a possibility there could be a handful, but there are states around this country that are being lauded for pointing out that they have thousands of non-citizens that they've kept on the list but moved over to this other bucket. And we have tens and hundreds because on the front end, being a real ID state, and what you need to understand is anybody in Georgia who has gotten a driver's license in the last, really, it started in 2012, we were completely real ID by 2016, means you have to have your proof of citizenship because the only way you're allowed to get a driver's license is if you are a citizen or you're a legal resident alien, which means you have to have walked in there with your alien ID card, if you want to get that. And that once you have the alien ID number, you are not going to be asked to get it on the voter rolls, and that's been since 2016. Or you have to have your birth certificate or your passport. And if, it's unfortunate, too, 
if you're a woman who is married, you have to walk in there with your marriage certificate. And if you're a woman who's been married and divorced, you have to walk in there with your marriage certificate and your divorce decree to show what your name is. So it matches the social security records. So it's very, we have a very, very strong system on the front end. And one of the good things is you have to interface with it once every eight years in Georgia. Um, a situation we saw in Arizona where they have basically tens of thousands of people who predated their citizenship check in 1996 was in, a in Arizona, once you get a driver's license, it's good for 50 years. So you never have to go back into the government and talk about anything again. So that's one of the issues that they've run into because of their two-tiered system that they have, where they have a federal only. If you can't be a citizen, you can vote in all the federal races, including president, but you can't vote in state races. And interestingly, right now in Arizona, the Republican Party is suing to keep those people on, or they did sue to keep those people on through the next election cycle because the majority of them are registered Republicans. Yes, ma'am. Well, one of the reasons the secretary ordered this non-citizenship audit is to prove to people that while there are ways that some can potentially get on, it is ceasingly rare. And especially in a state like Georgia that has very good data management. But in every state in this country, an individual has to sign a certificate stating that they are, in fact, a legal a, a U.S. citizen. This is one of the things that the secretary has fought for since he was elected in 2019. He and I and Deputy Fuchs went to Washington, D.C. in 2019 and to meet with Congress people who didn't want to talk about this. They need to update the National Voter Registration Act to allow for us to have better citizenship um, verification in all the states of the union. Because right now the NVRA basically says you can't do it, which is why Arizona has that bizarre two-tier system. There are federal rules that get in the way of this. There is no proof that there is this overwhelming number of, of non-citizens on the rolls. Because the reality is, if you're a non-citizen and you're a, a legal resident and you're on a path to citizenship, if you try to register to vote, you will never get to be a citizen. It is a very high risk, very low reward for one vote thing. There are situations I know in other states where their DMVs are not as good at checking these things, and sometimes they will slip through unintentionally. And that's a bad situation. But in Georgia, I know this, and in all across the country, the level of potential is very low. Is it there in every state? Likely, but a small, small amount. But in Georgia, we know we have the best system in America of, of stopping it on the front end. So you don't see that the outcome of the I do not see that changing the outcome of the election in Georgia, especially since we only identified 20 and they've all been canceled. Yes. Uh, What it is, is we will work with our attorneys and our investigative unit to hand over all the evidence we have to the individual county DAs here. Now it's completely up to them to make the prosecutorial decisions. A situation we had where we had double voters, we handed them over, and take for, as an example, in Forsyth County, there were two double voters we handed over to them. They saw one, they said, we don't think we have enough to prosecute this one. Then they saw another where they believe they do have enough to prosecute. That is not our decision, that is not our investigator's decision, not our lawyer's decision, it is a local district attorney's decision to make those. Now, the evidence of some of these we think is at a high enough level where they probably should be prosecuted, but that's not our call. Um, we have, we did a press conference on that, and we had a, a press release on that before. Um, I can get that back to you. It's, I think we told Mike. How many double over, how many double over we have, Blake? We'd have to check it and get you that number. But it was, again, a very small number from multiple states. And the only reason we know this is because we are a member of ERIC, the Electronic Registration Information Center, and we compare those da data. Yes,